go. Okay, so now we're going to try to ask that wonderful question. If you guys had all the money in the world and could write a concept album, for which concept or subject would you most enjoy writing music? Mm. <laughs> I think she said awesome. That's awesome. That's a hard <laughs> one, though, too. It's uh, a very difficult one. But the, the good news well, is we, took, we yeah. took all the money out of the picture. You can, you know, we gave you billions of dollars, so... What would you do? Going back to the orchestra question you had before, Mark, yeah, um, yeah. that would be amazing to work with, like the London Philharmonic, you know, or to go to Abbey Road Studios, you know, do something amazing like that with, you know, a world renowned orchestra and, and concerts and touring with a big that's, full orchestra. That that's, would be that's amazing. what I would do. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Cool. With the lights, the stage, you know, set up, oh, it would be glorious. That would be awesome. Either, either that, either that or, uh, Peter Gabriel's uh, world, uh, uh, now I can't remember, his um, studio, uh, if you've ever heard of that. Um, but go ahead. I'm, all right, I'm going to go back to being quiet again. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely would be something special to to have such a big budget and involve orchestras, the best studios, you know, maybe special guest musicians and for sure that would be super awesome. And um I I have another I have a question actually for you Mark in this regards. You mentioned about you mentioned a concept what does a concept have has to do with um, uh, with with the, with money? What what do you mean by by that? In, in well, I, I mean, you you think of like uh, the Who and some of those huge albums that had these big concepts that had movies behind them. Uh, okay, so like a story, like a story. Yeah, yeah. In that, in that um, sense, okay. Okay. Or, or the Beatles, all the Beatles movies and things like that. That kind of thing where you just, you can do whatever you want and, you know, uh, yeah, and just. Yeah, the, the way I see like a concept album too is you're talking about the same thing throughout the entire length of the album, right? Yeah, so yes, it's not yes, necessarily yes. like a money thing or like, you know, you can have all these different yeah. things. It's, it's yeah. to me i always think of it as like it's all it's 60 or 70 minutes of like just one song essentially or i mean yeah that's dark side of the moon that that yeah. kind of thing but but just what concepts let, let's start with the concept first what concept would you guys like to um handle or work with or is that too Hard. It's hard to pinpoint because again, I think we're so interested in, in so many things and it's hard to say for sure. I mean, again, like with this album, we're playing a lot with, I would say the concept of, of the initiation of a timeless voyager is about dreaming, dreams, hope. Each song, we have them in a specific order in this album as a concept album to so, yeah, and convey that it, yeah. emotion and the joy. Yeah. So what do you think, Charlie? Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll she likes it to it. Yeah, I, I was, yeah, yeah, I, I was just a little bit confused when I first heard the question because I was trying to connect how does um, writing a concept album, um, uh, how does doing that, um, no, no, that's not what I want to say, <laughs> sorry how can that be related to money you know because the the creative part is like infinite you know we don't really but, need and and well to put together like a quad something like that but in 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 case of a production yes yeah. that's that that's what i what i'm thinking yes so in case of putting together a super big huge production of course you know that would be super interesting and i personally like to to touch 
topics that have that have some sort of uh, power to awaken people and bring mm. positive messages. So talk about peace and love and uh, mindfulness, you know, things that we desperately need on, on, on earth with everything that's going on. And so we, I, I personally think that this would be something that I will always pursue and in a way, like, uh, for example, Pink Floyd did with The Wall, you know, The Wall was something yeah, that was denouncing the horrors of, of wars and, yeah. and the darkness of, of this kind of thing. So in a way, it would be really beautiful to try to produce something that can reach everyone on, on the planet. I mean, not everyone, mm -hmm. as, many, as many people as possible by bringing... Uh, a beautiful message of hope and love and peace and freedom and and all that. So um, it's it's very important to inject this kind of uh, values because we desperately need it. And there's yeah. there's enough of the other out there. So thank you very much for saying that. I, I'm I'm happy to hear that. Um, Thank that you. Yes. Really, no, that really is good because there's, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, I'm agree with Charlie. Um, it's definitely, that would be a really good concept to mm -hmm. hold together all of the situation going on in the whole world. And it's basically what Charlie says, it's sending a good message to everyone. It would be one concept. It can be anything. Like, I had two favorite concept albums, uh, like Queen Strike Operation Mindcrime was one, big was influence. Another one. Yep. and another Dream Theater, the scenes from a memory. That's two, it's like two different concepts, but it's saying something, each song as one. So ours could be like that. I like images and words, but I do like that one as well. Images yeah. and words, that piano, especially, Charlie, I don't know if you've ever heard that. Uh, um, uh, what's the song? Glass? Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but um, that one also, no, not that one, but there's another one that has a fantastic drum uh, solo. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, help me out here, uh, drummer. Uh, the um, oh, come on, it's killing me. You know what I'm talking about, where he just blasts the drums. Um, uh, not, now I'm thinking of song to wind me up. No, it's not wind me up. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, you guys know. Yeah. It'll, it'll, I'm gonna Google it while you guys are talking. Uh, <laughs> Maybe they were, they they had a different concept. The, maybe the one some kind of thousand degrees of something album. I don't remember. I was gonna say going back to Dream Theater. Um, a change of seasons is like a twenty three or twenty four minute song, <laughs> right? That's I right. mean, that is you know half of a that, half of a concept album. album. I used to I used to play drums of that song all the time. It was it was uh it was just a lot of fun to to go through that entire thing. In fact, I have um at some point I had two drum sets, and I had, it was a guys' weekend or something. And I put both of them in the garage, and I think me and my brother both played to the song together all the way through. I mean, he he did what he could, but <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't play a lot anymore. But uh. We, he he, uh, he he kept up pretty well, so it was that was a lot of fun. I have that video somewhere. You should look at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the one that finally came back to me, pull me under. Oh, pull me pull under. Pull me under okay. is the drum. It's right up there with probably the top, I think, drum. Yeah. Solos. The images ever. and verse album. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. What about Live at the Marquee? Live on the Marquee was uh, also another album I used to jump to all the time. Okay. It's a phenomenal yeah. album. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, anyone else want to talk about the concept or we'll move on from there? Okay. Which album would you choose as your favorite of all time? This is a very difficult one. Ooh. But we'll go around the room and if you had to pick one sort of desert island, you know, desert I have island. one. I can tell uh, right away. My favorite. It's Queen's Ray Empire. Yeah. He's a Seattle guy. <laughs> that wouldn't be mine, but I, I do like that one. I love that album. But, and I was here when that happened, and it was just, it took over. The oh. It's a great, yeah. Uh, I wish he could get back. Uh, Jeff Tate would get back with him. Um, mm. He's uh, he's all over Europe right now. Um, yeah. But he, he actually lives right down the, not too far from here in, uh, oh, cool. uh, I can't remember the name of the city now, out near Edmonds and North Seattle. And uh, he, uh, uh, one of these islands here, they actually had a studio that they uh, did Empire and a bunch of their albums uh, and Hart used it and a lot of different Seattle bands. Yeah, I'd say mine is uh, Metallica, Metallica. That's a good one. Because oh, yeah. that's, that's the one that actually got me into to metal music. But also, it's uh, it's a phenomenal album. And uh, learning a, a little a bit about, you know, how it came to be, you know, they heard the Dr. Feelgood album. Yeah. They're like, we want that. And when you listen yeah. to those albums, you're like, damn, dude, it's it's a very, very similar sound. And I love Dr. Feelgood. I know, love that album. song. Not so much the album, but it, that song. Yeah, I, yeah I, I just love the album. And I thought it sounded great, you know, as a, what, a, a, a 10 or 10 year old or something. And, um, you know, then Metallica, Metallica came out. And, you know, there's just, I don't, there's not a bad song on that album. So, um, yeah, that's, that's it for me. I have to say the first song that really turned me into classical music, doing it as a profession, you know, going on to school to major in music was I heard Le Nozze di Figaro, The Marriage of Figaro from oh, Mozart. Yeah. Beautiful. I heard Voi Che Sapete. I heard that. And that just caught my ear when I was in high school. I'd been singing classical repertoire for choirs and such, but that um, hearing that for the first time is what really pulled me in that direction. Um, so this is really hard. Cause again, I feel like I've had these two lives where I'm like, oh, I'd love to have some of this classical music if I was trapped on an island somewhere. But again, um, having no, this kind of renaissance of music. There's <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. Wrong. Exactly, but, but you're making me pick one. You're making me pick one. So I'm saying if I was on this island, I would say with this renaissance of me doing symphonic metal the past few, couple of years here, I absolutely love Nightwish, the 2013 live at Wacken, first time with Floriansen, their headline. It's amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. I, I'll watch that on YouTube. I have it on my phone. I'll mm -hmm. have it when I'm driving. I just I just feel like that is just the best of the best. It's, of course, the greatest of all, you know, of all their albums up to that point. They were singing all the great tunes, and she just knocked it out of the <laughs> Wacken. <laughs> you know, 100 mile radius there of all those fans. It was amazing. That's just an amazing album. Yeah. Nice. Well, I always said that my favorite album would be Vangelis um, Blade Runner soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Because it's very complete. I love that movie and the atmosphere mm. that he's able to recreate with with his scenes and his piano and and his arrangements are just epic, wonderful. But if I had to pick a metal album, since everyone is picking a metal album over here, I would <laughs> go with with uh, Gamma Ray's Land of the Free, which is okay. probably my favorite. All it's right. just a masterpiece. Now, I, I love the what you mentioned with um, uh, the Vangelis. Did you? I, I'm also a Yes fan. I, I grew up with Yes, and I love the albums he put together with John Anderson. 
Yeah. Um, and especially Friends of Mr. Cairo. Uh, that was, that when that thing came out, it just, I, that was my album of the year at that time, I'm pretty sure. Um, mm-hmm. Every song on that album is, you've heard that? I never heard of that. I knew that he, he he collaborated with John Anderson, but um, never listened to that. Check that one out. Uh, it'll blow, it'll blow your mind. They're both uh, like 20s, 30s, silent era, uh, gangster movies, that kind of thing. They both love that kind of genre. And the uh, album goes right down that road and it's it's um, it's like a movie i mean it's just mm-hmm. it's really cool and then they do some mayflower is beautiful you love that as a keyboardist and well there's there's a bunch of them it's a great album yeah um friends of mr cairo and i used to i used to have the beautiful white covered album i, I think i actually still have the vinyl but i used to have the cd and then lost that and moves and now i got the adapted one but anyway um uh, he uh, john is incredible i uh, saw him once on his solo tour in orlando and what a guy i mean you would think the amount of time and you know he's been out on the world stage you know the last thing he would do would take requests but <clears throat> he uh, walks out in front of everyone he goes you know i could do all sorts of yes songs but I want to do what you want to do. And he just basically said, you give me some requests. And we were blown away. And then he pulled everyone. That was the other thing that that I couldn't believe either. The place wasn't full. And he goes, everyone come down here. I want everyone close by. It was unbelievable. What a show. But yeah, anyway, (laughs) enough about that. All right. Um, So, um, all right, well, let's go. I mean, we... Let's talk about this album first, uh, because I just want to make sure, is there anything else you want to talk about uh, the current album first, and then I want to jump into uh, if you're working on a new album. But let, let anything else you guys want to say about uh, um, uh, the initiation of a Timeless Voyager? What would you like to know about the album? Is there a particular question? Um, there was that one earlier about which which is your favorite song. Um, it, it, I love the title, that idea that we are all timeless voyagers, and this is our initiation or our you know first chance with this album to kind of feel that experience. So that that's how what I got out of that title, but was it was that correct or way off or yeah, you're you're very close. With this title, I I wanted to talk about the magic of life. Okay. Um I once read a very interesting interview of an Italian journalist <clears throat> called uh, Paolo Franceschetti, who was discussing about the fact that in reality, uh, the divine Dante, Divine's Comedy, and yeah. um, Le Aventure di Pinocchio from uh, Carlo Collodi are in are um, basically telling the story of someone who is coming to life and having to go through several stages and learning lessons in order to ascend, in order to you know, reach a certain level of consciousness and, and whatnot. And where is in, where in the, um, in the Divine's Comedy, what really matters, what really comes out is that the power of love, you know, can guide you through, through everything. Same, same is for Pinocchio, for instance, where he, his dream of becoming uh, a kid was mm-hmm. basically, um, all he wanted and after he he over overcome many um, challenges and situations and he understood what what really what what really mattered to him and and he was granted the gift of life so the way i constructed the title 
it's uh, it's to be seen in this way. So <clears throat> you see that the song starts with a ver with a particular intro. It's almost like um, um, what you call that a magic magic box. Is it right? Uh, a carillon yeah. starting a melody. La, 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 la. Okay, and so I thought, okay, this box. could yeah, yeah, yeah music, like music, yeah. Or music, music box, box, not magic box. Yeah, yeah. music box. That's what I meant. <laughs> And so it starts like that, and then you you start to hear uh, a more rhythmic part with the drums and the percussion. And I figure, I visualize uh, a ritual, you know, where you have wizards and witches, you know, getting around the the, the newborn and telling him that <clears throat> he's about to to come to life, and he will have to learn several lessons and things to or um, and several challenges but in the end if he believes in his dreams he will basically understand the meaning of of life and and so forth so that's how i i, I that's how i imagined the, the title and so the song is uh, a, an anthem to to life to come to to be alive, to live life like there's no tomorrow and go always to the fullest. Well, I don't know how you top that. Um, that is, thank you. Thank <laughs> that you. definitely uh, adds to my perception of it. So thank you very much for that. Um, so I guess I will ask that question. Are you Are you working on what's next? Or I know you just did the video for this album, but um, are you still going to roll out some more videos for this album? Or because it's a wonderful album, and Thank there's you. definitely more songs that that could be featured. That's our that's our plan because again, COVID, we lost those that yeah. time. So we are really enjoying this album this year and trying to put on the calendar to it. Definitely, hopefully you know, release more videos because we just um, really want to take this year to really promote it and enjoy it. And we're so grateful to the reception we've been receiving on YouTube, online, from people we don't know all over the world who are buying our album and leaving messages and comments. We're super appreciative and we're so glad it's resonating and um, with, with people all over the world and that they're enjoying it and that they are you know loving and touched touched by our music so um yeah so we we are well, hopefully like we said we're going to get our new latest video out in, in a few weeks hopefully two maybe three i don't know we'll see what mike can do and then um yes we're hoping to do probably two or three more from this album just because again this is like our 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 baby we've worked so hard to have this happen the and to so we're going to enjoy it for this week but then we this year but then we do have other songs that that charlie has already composed that we did not put on this album that we're, we're waiting for a future project and more is to come. So I'll let Charlie kind of continue with that. Yeah, like Susie said, um, originally we had more songs for this album, but for technical reasons, we had to put them aside. So we definitely have a lot, <laughs> a lot of material and, um, and I'm working on preparing demos for, the, for, for new songs. Um, I have quite a few, <laughs> and uh, but right now the main focus is the, first of all the the Vakan battle right now, and and the new videos also to keep promoting the album because we you know we we want this album to be known by as many people as possible all over the world, so we will keep promoting the album for for the rest of this year. In the meantime, we keep on practicing and. You know, working on on new songs and and shooting new videos. So, and of course, you know, whenever we have the chance to play live, we will. Of course, we want to totally be um, enjoying also this aspect of music. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I had all sorts of stuff about a new album, so we won't go into any of that. Um, is there anything else that um, that I haven't mentioned uh, that you would like to talk about? Um, 
Ever, anyone, uh, anyone can participate in that. You, we, we, you've covered so many great questions, Mark. Um, just again, at the core of our group, again, we're good friends. We're, we're we love yeah. what we're doing. Um, and it's wonderful that we've been able to fit this band, this project, this mission into our lives, you know, and with our families, we all love each other's families as well. We're very close with um, everyone's, you know, significant other and, and such. So um, yeah, it's just, it's a real joy to be able to be on stage with your, you know, my brothers in metal, I'll say, and um, have this synergy together where it's like magic. You're all just, you know, vibing on this same, same frequency and, and, and singing and performing and, and, and sending it out. It's, it's just, it's, it's magic. It really is. It's, it's, it's hard to put that to words. And so I know how grateful I am that, that I'm in this group and that, and that we find time to, again, perform and record. And this album, again, it took everything with um, this last couple of years to make this be the with best, COVID. you know, we could, the quality with COVID and having it be, uh, mastered in Sweden with Fascination Street Studios, they're they're phenomenal. And again, uh, I'm just so grateful to my my metal brothers here and and our projects. And you know, we, we're, we're what's great is we're open to all possibilities. We're we're waiting to see. You know, you know, we're promoting it and we're we're hoping we can do some. You know, performing outside of the Bay Area too would be great. And we'll see how it, how it comes. So thank you again for having us on, Mark, and sharing our music. Well, definitely. We'd love to have you up here in, in the Seattle, Washington area. And uh, I'm sure they would love to have you up in Vancouver as well. Oh, that'd be great. Any, nice. Anyone else? Uh, we're, we got that 10-minute time limit. But we got 10 minutes. But... I'm yeah, well, that. like, yeah, go ahead, Kurt. Yeah. Sorry, I was I was just gonna share something going going kind of back to the orchestral uh, playing with orchestras. Um, so a band that I'm really into, uh, Demu Demu Borgir. It's a very difficult name to say. They're a a, a black metal band. Uh, so they actually played a concert at Vakin in 2012, and they they just came out with the album of that concert last year. Um, so you can actually, you can listen to it, but you can find it on YouTube and you can watch it. And it's probably one of the best concerts I've ever seen. Uh, it's just phenomenal. So they're, they're playing with a full orchestra. They, um, they have a full choir and everything like that. So um, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a must watch, must listen. If you're into this type of music, it's, it's heavier, but it's, it's really good stuff. So I, I highly recommend. I've I've shared it with these guys before. I don't, I don't know if anybody watched it or not, but uh, it's it's fantastic. So um, highly recommend. It's true that many famous bands uh, use the use Vakin to put out some amazing live videos. Yes, those are there are some that are so good. So yeah, definitely it's. Uh, one of the best places to <laughs> to perform. Well, it's like it's the largest. Uh, it's the largest open no. air festival, right? I mean, it's yeah. the the biggest one. So, yeah, it makes it, it makes a lot of sense. Since you mentioned that uh, that um, Visions of Atlantis is doing exactly what you said, they're releasing a um, a new CD or album of their performances there. Um, I'll, I'll throw another one out to you. Just uh, I found these guys beginning of the year, and I I can listen to just about anything. And I guess I grew up, uh, of course, a lot uh, longer longer ago than you guys. Uh, so some of my favorite bands were uh, Led Zeppelin and uh, Traffic, and of course Genesis. Genesis is really kind of the core but uh that and let's level if you get a chance and you're open to little it's definitely not metal 
Um, but they do play some deep purple kind of songs. Um, Sienna Root out of Sweden. Brand new album, Revelation. Uh, that lady is, um, was a Bida, is kind of, she brings together Grace Slick and Janis Joplin. And see if you hear what I hear. That That's what I hear. It's like having those two ladies somehow come together and sing as one person. And it is, it's astounding. I mean, the music is astounding as well. Uh, but they they did some other albums that I'm into, but just give them a listen. But hey, yeah. everyone, I, I really want to thank you guys because you're my hope for this area, for the, the West Coast. I'm really hoping you guys are going to kind of be the vision of Atlantis of the future for this area. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, and even maybe take it further. Um you have a fantastic sound. You really do. And I can see the cohesion and I'm so happy that you guys like each other. And and maybe I can even go out there and say, love each other. And that's wonderful. I think somebody said that. And I'm glad to hear that uh, because it is so hard to keep bands together these days. Uh, As you say, you're all working multiple jobs, maybe interested in other bands and other things. And yeah, just stay strong. I really hope you guys stay together. I'm loving this album. Looking forward to what's coming in the future. And uh, thanks for giving me the time to do this because you guys are fantastic. Um, I'm glad I met you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you you so much. Yeah, yeah, really. uh, Thank you. Uh, anything else anyone wants to say? Otherwise, yeah, thank you very much. Just again, it's it's because of people like you, Mark, that are taking the time to write about us. Thank you for that beautiful article expressing, you know, your thoughts on our album, and and we just truly are grateful. That's just again, how do we how do we sum up our thanks for that? Because just because again, you're going so out of your way to do it, and we so appreciate your time and and energy into expressing you know those thoughts and and sharing sharing it with others so thank you and thank you to everyone who's you know along for our journey all of all of the timeless voyagers and shalonians who are with us so thank you yeah please everyone give this album a chance and um if it doesn't immediately hit you like it hit me um it will grow on you and uh just give it time. It's it's wonderful. And uh, these guys are going to be around for a while. I can sense that. Well, uh, thanks again. I'll, I'll go ahead and turn off anyone else, anything else. Otherwise, I'll turn off the recording and, and we can. Talk. I would like to say something just about a couple of words uh, about the cover art. If anybody, oh, yeah. can, if Thank anybody yeah. can get the physical copy of the album, they can see actually the whole cover about, and that was another journey to get that cover done with uh, our friends in Hungary. He's an artist, Alex Tut Mihaifi. He did yeah, that. I, I don't have here. a copy yet. Yeah. Here yeah. and yes, but the full is the wide screen, all three pages. Yeah, folds out. It's so that's a clever. wide screen. Full, full size picture art he did, and can you imagine if you say the album title to him and okay, take that something. as a picture, yeah. take it to the uh, art, <laughs> that title. So that's what he did. He really was... did. No, he did a fantastic. <laughs> and thank you for bringing that up because I skipped over that, and unfortunately, in these modern times. People don't look at the covers of the albums anymore. They go right to the download. Digital, yeah, the and it, digital it's a shame stuff because there. you really it's, did you, put a lot of work into it. And it, it you can is, see the front, the front yeah. uh, part of the cover, but the back and inside it makes one as a one picture. So if anybody can get the physical, it's, they can see that and how is the quality. 
very good quality. Yeah, I need to get the CD. I still don't have it, but I'm working on it. Um, it's Amazon and uh, my local retailer. It, it, I just, and you, you guys, hopefully some of you are old enough to remember when you can actually go down the street, walk into a record store and, you know, you get whatever you wanted. You didn't have to wait for mm -hmm. stuff. And mm -hmm. now it's really sad. I, I miss those times. But I miss uh, Tower Records, I'll say. Yeah, go. Tower Records. You'd go uh, and I'd go to the classical section and I would just peruse. <gasps> What's new? What can I, oh, what do I want? You know, yeah. Are any of you guys old enough to remember Peaches Records? They used to sell the crates that you'd put your vinyl in. And uh, they're like Peaches crates, like you would, you know. Uh, but they were famous for a while. We had one here in mm -hmm. Seattle. And, uh, yeah, it, all of those places, uh, I would get lost in those places. I would just stay there for hours. And, um, you know, people were like, aren't you going to come home? Well, yeah, I'm going to come home. But <laughs> it's, I'm having too much fun, yeah. <laughs> and I found so many bands just – and I'm glad you mentioned artwork – I was one of those people that actually did look at the artwork and met, found out about so many bands just through the artwork. Uh, uh, just a real quick example, if you, if, if you guys are into um, more progress music, uh, IQ, I don't know if any of you guys know who IQ is from England, but uh, the cover of their album the lead singer is on the cover and it looked like Peter Gabriel and they said I got to give this a chance and love them. I mean, I've got, I think their whole collection. Um, so yeah, just through cover art, things happen. So yeah. And now you don't have that anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. 